So lately, there's been a question about what to do with all of our garbage, and it's pretty obvious that Metro Vancouver is pushing for the incinerator solution, mostly because we make the easier for them. Oh yeah, and the Cabanta Company is apparently even offering to build it on Vancouver Island out of their own pocket. Wow, that's pretty generous. Of course, the cost of the incinerators seem to compare to how much they were earned to process their traffic users, and they'll probably make even more by processing garbage from the state. Because incinerators need tons of garbage to run efficiently, and it doesn't really matter where it comes from as long as it's there. They say, however, that the incinerator will lower greenhouse emissions. Well, as long as it fudge the numbers. In truth, it would actually be a whole new source of pollution since you're still burning materials that create smoke, and you can't really control what kind of toxins get released into the environment when you burn a hot bunch of garbage from all over the place. It's not like it'll magically turn into CO2 and water like some people have stated. And although these fumes and ashes and dioxin consisting of who knows what will probably spread across the Fraser Valley where you can eat it, drink it, breathe it, you shouldn't worry as there's no proof that these toxins will cause birth effects nor turn you to a minus number. Well, there's actually no proof that they won't either since Metro Vancouver hasn't really done any proper research to guarantee your safety. They're basing their findings on the words of their consultants who get the research from... Uh, yeah, I can be sure now. I mean, this Jim Bridges guy they found actually lobbied in 1995 that secondhand smoke doesn't adversely affect your health or increase the likelihood of cancer. Oh yeah, and the one professor who did do some research and said an incinerator can negatively affect your health got his funding cut by Metro Vancouver. Oh, by the way, Greenpeace doesn't actually support incineration as they complain. That was a hit of misquote in the April 5th, 2010 Toronto Star that was detracted a few days later. Not to criticize Metro Vancouver's actions, of course. They have to make a decision quickly, and they can't let science the facts stand in the way because they say the Cass Creek landfill is going to be full by 2012. Yes, they didn't get that memo from the MOE approving an extension of the site that would extend its lifetime by 17 to 25 years. Although burying the tracks is not much better than burning them, especially when they're a sensible alternative, it would mean that we don't have to rescue the decisions to make a rational and informed choice on how to handle the garbage situation. We can ask important questions, like why are there so many internet sites dedicated to the dangers of incineration? How efficient is a system that demands the minimum amount of garbage each day? Can Metro Vancouver go ahead with incineration even though there is a long history of fines and environmental problems for companies running these facilities? If you would like Metro Vancouver to think before the act, go to zerowakebc.org and give us your thoughts. We can then pass it on to the BC Minister of the Environment, Jerry Penner. After all, it's your garbage, your environment. Should you have a say what happens to it? This is your chance to speak now or forever hold your breath.